Hi, it's Phil. It's Phil Hewlett and Friends. And this is the hour two of episode 357 on April 20th, 2018. It's 420. Like a magnum. Kelly Sue Peters is here with us today. So is Gonzo Greg Spillane. Hi, I'm Phil. Glad you're here with us because that makes a show when you have that whole equation figured out. In a what, few like moments. people listen to it, you mean? Is that what you're saying? That's right. <laughs> oh, okay, We're, yeah. we're going to celebrate 420 Day in just a little bit, uh, National Weed Day, with Dr. Regina Nelson and Michael Browning. They wrote a book about weed. Uh, but they do believe, and they're going to make the case for everybody uh, having some uh, marijuana today uh, to celebrate. Also, uh, later in the program, we're going to figure out exactly what Mark Zuckerberg is up to and what he's doing with our data. <laughs> it, 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 there's a, definitely a theme today, and I think it's because today's April 20th. It's 420, mm-hmm. and at 420 p.m., people all over the world will gather to smoke or consume marijuana in celebration of 420 Day, National Weed Day. So that means, uh, and, and all over the world, I mean, it is national here, but it's, it should be International Weed Day. That means when we're done with this interview uh, and we'll be watching the clock uh, and the time zones, it'll be 420 somewhere, the people in Nook, which is the capital of Greenland, will be lighting up by the end of this uh, conversation we're about to have. Joining us now are the co-authors of the book, Time for the Talk, Talking to Your Doctor or Patient About Medical <laughs> Cannabis. Uh, and there is a pretty good chance uh, the both of them will be uh, uh, sparking up a fatty when the clock hits 420 in their time zones. Dr. Regina Nelson and Michael Browning, hello to both of you. Happy tw- 420 Day. Happy hey, happy 420. Thank you for having us. Now, hey. I, I, I made a wild assumption uh, that you uh, both will be lighting up to celebrate this day. So a uh, quick two-person poll. Yeah. Will you partake to celebrate National Weed Day? Positive. Absolutely. Well, see, now we know who we're talking to. That's good. <laughs> now, uh, do you think everybody should smoke pot today? You know, they should use it in one way or another. It's a good, healthy thing to do. Oh, so it's it's uh, like part of your daily uh, healthy diet, in other words. Kind of like Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So so give me some background. And let's start with you, doctor. Uh, from a, uh, a medical point of view, uh, what does uh, marijuana, what does cannabis do for us? Uh, it, let's say, let's take me. I haven't had any of it in my bloodstream for a good, uh, I, I don't know, 30 years or so. I thought you would say 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> So if I were if I were to suddenly introduce that into my life, how would I be better for it? Wow, that well, I think that's a really good question. Um, you know, the real key to this, and you know, is that we all have an endocannabinoid system, and it's this receptor system throughout our body that has effects in our central nervous system, in our immune system. So even when we see people just smoking cannabis occasionally very casually, well, it's kind of like taking a little bit of a vitamin. It stores in their fat cells. It's why they'll fail a drug test for the next 30 days um, because our body uses it as an essential nutrient. And so the phytocannabinoids from the cannabis plant can be very helpful for most people and in general are not an unhealthy thing to consume. Yeah, all right. Uh, 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 I'll buy I'll buy that. It sounds like it's a good thing. Michael, um do you have a handle on the history of 420 Day, why why we celebrate on this day, on that time, or where all of that came from? Do you have an idea what that is? Well, yeah, the legend goes back quite a bit. And actually, we had the uh, film uh, premiere of The Legend of 420 that's on Netflix now here in Denver. But uh, they didn't really touch on it as much as the legend that I've grown up with, which is in Mendocino County, the... Uh, County officers there and the dispatch had 420 as the code for public uh, consumption of said substance. So, yeah, the kids kind of picked up that they were being busted on a 420. So every time they went out and uh, got in the circle, they went on a 420 break. And so it kind of developed from there into the national holiday. Yeah, uh, that's that makes a lot of sense. Now that we have... Uh... Dispatcher, we have a 420. 420. Oh, yeah. I was reading a piece today, and I, I'm wondering how you guys feel about this, that the the whole 420 thing, and like there's like companies and corporations kind of trying to jump in on it now, you know? And I- is it lame <laughs> now, you know? Is it, May I jump in on that? Because, yeah, yeah, how long 
has uh, corporate America been trying to co-opt culture? Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, true, and if they can make a buck off of this, they will, certainly, and uh, marijuana is not the cheapest thing. At least it's not as cheap, comparably, uh, uh, as it was back in the 1970s. You know, if you had 10 bucks, you, you could probably last a couple of weeks with what you could buy with that, but now 10 bucks doesn't get you, what does it get you? Does Three it get joints. you anything? Really? $10? It gets you a gram. Three joints. A, yeah, maybe three joints on a sale, a 420 sale. You know, you can see pre-roll six to ten dollars, but it, typically you can buy one gram of cannabis for. $10. Well, that's only a little I, more than I a always, cigarette. I always can get three joints of can either you? indica or right. sativa for for ten bucks. Indica or sativa. Now, what does that mean exactly? Are, there, are those strains? Is that like coffee? <clears throat> You've got the arabica and the uh, the other one. Sativa you makes you have more well, energy. What do you say, right, doctor, so or Mike, uh, the, either one? Sativa would be like having coffee, and maybe uh, indica is more like chamomile tea. Mm -hmm. Oh, soothing, more relaxing. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, you're, uh, uh, Michael, are you in Denver right now? Uh, Loveland, yeah, just north of there. Okay, now uh, that's a state, uh, Colorado, that has uh, legal recreational pot, if I'm not mistaken. I'm in California. We have legal recreational pot. However, there's still this federal law that uh, um, it, it takes precedence over the state law, at least at the moment. The attorney general has uh, a twig up his uh, uh, sphincter about this. And so where do things stand on a national level? The president, President Trump, just a couple days ago said he's on board with a national uh, policy of recreational being legal, and uh, I, I think uh, Schumer, the uh, Senate Minority Leader, just said, "Yeah, let's go for a, a national uh, recreational uh, law." Where do where does things actually stand? I, is there more than just a uh, I don't know, like a political grandstanding kind of support in Congress for this, or do you think there's actual movement that we're going to see in the next uh, I don't know year or two? I believe that, uh, you know, Mario Cuomo in New York is going for uh, adult use bill there in New York State as well. And, yeah, applaud Schumer, applaud former Speaker of the House Boehner. But if you look at Boehner's situation, you know, it's kind of like what we talked about with uh, jumping on board and on the 420 holiday. Mm -hmm. It's culturally cool. Plus, the politicians are now starting to realize how profitable it is. Yeah, so, politically expedient, yeah. And can we also just say that Boehner's name is actually Boner? Can we just say that? <laughs> we can. Okay. Well, and my question to people like Boner is this question of when are you going to back up these um, unfair legal practices that have imprisoned cannabis people all over the United States? I mean, we imprison more people than in that all other countries combined. Yeah. Exactly. And we do that often on these very small things. And they've had hands in that as well. If they're going to put their hands into the cannabis pie now for money, yeah. they need to undo some of the social harm that still surrounds this. Yeah, so the other things Definitely. we have to undo, the way I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, the first step is getting marijuana off the list of Schedule One drugs. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, we support... Mm -hmm. We definitely support descheduling cannabis. It never belonged on the schedule in the first place. It was placed there in the 70s as a temporary measure. It was, you know, it has been over and over stated that it does not belong there. So we support descheduling of cannabis. Then, then what? Removing the restrictions on banks so marijuana companies or marijuana cannabis-related companies, hemp-related companies, as, they as, could all become legitimate yeah. enterprises, right? As soon as that's removed as a schedule and drug, all of that happens. And all of these dispensaries that are hit with this 280E penalty because they deal with a schedule one drug, that would go away and they could do business as normal. Yeah. And, um, you know, banking, again, a huge piece of the pie is still very problematic in this yeah. industry. All these things are tied to the fact that this is a schedule one drug. And if we remove it from the schedule, I'll be right I'll be rich. Look at our laws. I'll be rich, I tell you, because of all the millions of uh, marijuana-related stocks I own no, that yeah, I I'm only invested a thousand dollars. Right? In. I, yeah. I try to get dispensaries, you know, to advertise on the radio, and we're in a weird spot because a radio station is, you know, federally regulated. So oh. it's really well, and that's true. They have, in fact, in some states, they will. In within the laws, ban certain types of advertising, including radio promotion and other things that mm -hmm. 
dispensaries, you know, should be able to do. Yeah. Liquor stores do that. Drug stores do that. Doctors' offices do that. You know, we just have a disconnect here again, and it's 80 years of prohibition have led to a lot of institutionalized ways we look at this, and we don't necessarily want to see it publicly. We don't want to see those green crosses popping up and yeah. in doorways and things like that, you know, and you know, a little differently in California and Colorado now than in states like Oklahoma or Texas or, you know, I just came from Pennsylvania um, that has a new medical market that's very restricted and, you know, and and it's difficult to get those first layers of stigma off. Yeah, yeah in Pennsylvania, it's hard to buy booze. I yeah, mean, true. You know, yeah. <laughs> so. And now, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Nelson and uh, uh, Michael Browning, have either of you ever run into trouble with the man? <laughs> No, funny you should mention that. Oh, <laughs> why? We just what happened? recently were profiled. We were driving a Colorado rental car from. We were at the time we driven it from Colorado to Texas and spent over President's Day weekend to see my oldest son. And then we were driving into Oklahoma to spend a few days with my family before I was to speak at a conference in Oklahoma City. And we were. It was like a movie went down of a profiled stop, and the officer came to my window, and I asked him, you know, I don't understand why you just pulled me over. He said, well, technically, you may not have had your blinker on for a full hundred feet before that exit, and I saw you were from out of state, and I thought you might need to know the law around here. Woo. Hmm. That's, you know, very clearly a profiled stop, wow. and, and it did not go well from there, and... Um, what I will say is we're due back in court in Oklahoma on May 30th. Oh, good and times. we are very hopeful that, you know, the, the issue of this is profile stops are very, you know, they're a moneymaker um, for these right. um, small Oklahoma and other states' towns, and this needs to stop. You know, when I was being taken into custody, it became clear that our three arrests would help him win a prize over the weekend. Yeah. Jeez. And, uh -huh. you know, this is all a violation of our constitutional rights. And so we plan to, um, every time we go to Oklahoma, we're doing education, and we, we plan to make a platform because they gave us one, not one that we intended. Uh, it's uh, 11.20 in the morning here in Southern California, and right now it's, it's 4.20 in, <laughs> in Nook, uh, Greenland, and it's the capital of Greenland, and I think that's how you pronounce it. Isn't that where uh, one of the Three Stooges was born, Nook? Uh, and, uh, anyway, they're yeah, the, happy might, 420. Not be accurate, yeah. May not be okay. Right. Now the book is called Time for the Talk: Talking to Your Doctor or Patient About Medical Cannabis. And just before you go, when should I have that cannabis talk with my doctor? Today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I've got to have a reason. Like, okay, why did you bring this up, Phil? Well, well what's Phil, going what on? Hurts. What's what's going on with you? It's one of those things. Uh, it, it hurts when I do this, and the doctor says, "Don't do that." Don't I don't do know. It. I've got it's like old age things, right? The older you get, oh, the more things start, start to hurt. After you hit. So do you want some structural well, there is truth lubrication? What, what do I want? Lube? Is that what you said? Structural lubrication. For yeah. You. Would you like it For if your you. body moves easier? <laughs> yeah, I think maybe that's it because I can hear some of the joints creaking a little bit. They're rebelling. Yeah. yeah, well, but this is the thing that happens, and I think the senior market is one of the markets that you know, really can benefit the most from that. Even if you're pretty healthy, those regular aches and pains, they stay longer. You hear the things creak. One of the things I would suggest to you for 420 is to try a cannabis topical product, and you can buy CBD-infused hemp products online. There's no THC. Even if you buy one with THC from a dispensary, there's no euphoria in that you don't get high, but you get a body effect. And for those everyday aches and pains, arthritis issues and things like that, it's hugely soothing for people. It just takes that right off the radar. Um, so that's my suggestion for you to try for 420. Thank hey, you, doctor. Quick, can I ask one thing real quick before we? Uh, yeah, sure. We yeah, go for uh, it. it. It's uh, it, like uh, I'm reading today. Like marijuana is now a kind of a dirty word, or it's considered racist, or you know, because it was kind of the made-up word to make uh, cannabis bad. You know, uh, it really. It, are you right, guys? Because the farmers knew cannabis, and Harry Anslinger had to demonize it some way. So if he said cannabis is illegal, everybody would have been up in arms. But right. nobody knew the word marijuana then. Right. So right. is and, is mar and, marijuana a bad word, or can we keep using it, or no? 
we are not really using it so much in our everyday language anymore. We're replacing it with the name of the plant, cannabis. And right. I think that's probably how you've heard us refer to it mostly. And it's, you make social change by changing language. And it leads me to the fact that I do run a nonprofit in this, the ECS Therapy Center. And we are working on a project called Signs for the Times to help develop sign language around the use of cannabis, number, right. another right. normalizing factor. Right. And we'd love for your audience to get in support of that. Visit our website at myecs therapy.org my ecs therapy.org all right sounds good uh, dr regina nelson uh, michael browning thanks to you and all the folks in nook uh, happy 420 day to you hey don't forget to invite us to the absinthe party happy 420 there'll be room on the floor definitely all right uh, thank you, you guys. guys there we go come fly with the green fairy so this is my sign language for for reefer Oh, she's got her fingers together. and uh, Sign language on the radio, everybody. <laughs> Harry Jacob Ansliger was the United States government official mm-hmm. who served as the first commissioner of the U.S. Treasury Department's Federal Bureau of Narcotics. Uh, he, was, uh, he died in 1975, to give you an idea. So uh, 19 whenever, 50s, 40s? Right. So he was kind of behind the whole uh, reefer madness kind of thing, all that kind Did of Did you see my Instagram right? post regarding it? No, but I'm gone now. What, what is your Instagram uh, handle? Kelly Sue Peters. Oh, of course it is. But, well, because but Kelly I, has an IE. Branding, branding yeah. is good. Yeah. Yeah. As in an example. <laughs> oh, an example. You've, you've made an example of in 15 seconds. Karaoke song that if you were drunk enough and you're out of your comfort zone, you would sing. What if God smoked cannabis? All right, Greg. <laughs> Love Shack, baby. All right. Dirty White Boy by Foreigner. (laughs) All right, that's it for this episode. 357 of Phil Hewlett and Friends. Our theme song is composed and performed by Russ Monson for our executive producer, Mike Stark. For intern Ricky, who's doing great work today. For Kelly Sue and for Gonzo, I'm Phil. Talk to you next time on Phil Hewlett and Friends.